Bracket Monday in Section 1 Basketball. The boys' seeds are out. The girls' seeds are out. The tournaments are getting ready to go on Wednesday. We're going to have a snow day on Tuesday, getting ready for a big weekend. And this is the Class A show. And this is the tournament that I feel that there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of behind-the-scenes talk, and it's all been around one team. Who's going to face them? their rival in the quarterfinal? And we'll uh, we'll talk about that now. Bring in my man Ryan Moss to discuss the Class A tournament. Exciting. I think, Ryan, I think this was, again, this is like one of those, when the dust settles, where is Team TZ going to be, right? That's what everyone wants to know. Uh, we know where they're going to be. We know their road, and it's probably going to go and stay through Rockland. So thanks for joining me, man. This is, uh, this is an, we'll talk about AA being probably the most wide open one, but this is the one that I feel like has the, maybe the best storylines uh, as you go game by game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that, I mean, obviously, like, the potential showdown between Cap and Pearl River is, you know, something that, I mean, I might have liked to see that actually a little further down the road at the county center. Yeah. But, you know, you know, kind of taking one of these two teams out a little bit early. But, um, you know, I think this is, you know, I, I might be not quite as wide open as double A, but I think this is, you know, with Cap and D being a lower seed, I think this is one where you can actually see a lower seed kind of, you know, maybe you get like a three, four feet winning it. You know, maybe it's not one or two this year. Yeah, no, it's going to be it's been a lot of fun. I think the early rounds are going to be sort of chalky, and then you're going to get into the next rounds, and they're going to be they're going to be fun. So let's take a look at the seeds. Pro River earning the number one spot, seventeen and three. Uh, Irvington and Nanuet in an out bracket game. That's going to be dangerous if Nanuet wins that. Nanuet, again, another rivalry matchup. Uh, Nanuet Pro River, Little Brown Jug in football, playing each other in the first round of the playoffs in basketball. It's going to be a lot of fun. TZ going to face a Roosevelt team that they beat uh, last week. Barham Hills takes on the winner of Putt Valley Edgemont, Arsley Reineck uh, in that matchup. And then on the bottom half of the bracket, You've got Hastings, the number three seed. A little bit of a late skid to the season in terms of just how they played, but they got some a huge boost in bonus points in the final week. So it catapulted them, despite losing the Woodlands, back up to the number three spot. They have a tough road. Briarcliff or Lakeland in the opening round. Hennard, Pleasantville, Nyack, Obama School off their big win. And then Ryan will take on the winner of Albertus Magnus and Walter Panis. Yeah, I mean, Kevin, I mean, like you said, I think, you know, Nanuet, you know, the 17s, could potentially was paying... Pearl River in a live open game in a first round matchup. You know, where do you see kind of that, that first round game that's really going to, you know, potentially be a, a nail biter and maybe, you know, maybe somebody surprised somebody a little bit? Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't feel comfortable really picking many op- opening round games, but to me, the game that's the most intriguing in a lot of ways is Nyack and Obama School, right? So I just, I think the Obama School story is really one of the best in the section, and it's really one that people don't totally recognize. I mean, they go on the road on Saturday, uh, need to win. They know what's on the line for not just them, but for for a lot of schools who are looking for maybe an Albertus Magnus bonus point, uh, the game on Friday night. Uh, they go on the road, and they just lock in defensively. They're a very good defensive team. Sean Stein, in my opinion, John Rapport is the was the Conference 3, which is to basically be... Uh, the BCD or the ABC uh, coach of the year for Woodlands. He's done a phenomenal job these last three years. But to me, Sean Stan might have done, might be doing the best job of any coach in the conference. Maybe he's any coach in the section um, because of just the obstacles of Yonkers basketball that exist. That's just the reality. Uh, he's done a terrific job. Um, uh, Sadia Jabi is is a, is a really strong post player, and I think when you look at these matchups, I, I think that you know Obama's uh, Nyack does not really have someone who's going to be able to match up with him physically. We saw him go toe to toe with Tom uh, with Keith Capuano at Hastings and really held his own. If that game will come down to how the game is ref and if Obama can keep Nyack from getting out in transition and scoring Ray Booten is a phenomenal player but that that to me of all these is probably the the most intriguing uh, opening round matchup gotcha it's good 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 stuff there Kev I mean I think you just mentioned Hastings in there um you know we talked about this a little bit earlier I mean who do you think might be ripe for an upset you know maybe he's gonna have that first round matchup game where it, you just run into a team that's not the right team to be playing at that moment. Yeah, I, I you know, Lakeland is Lakeland. I felt because of the fact you look at Lakeland, right? Let's just they're the best shooting team, three point shooting team in section one. They hit twenty one three pointers in a win over Sleepy Hollow this year, and I watched every one of the back. I put together a video. Uh, 
there was a there was a lot of deep threes, there was a lot of contested threes, but there was a lot of uh, of great ball movement, extra pass, and you had Sleepy Hollow basically running around on the perimeter. This is a very dangerous matchup to me. I think Lakeland is actually maybe a favorite. They beat Ardsley in the final week of the regular season, uh, and now going into Hastings, there's there's just two factors why this I think. You know, Lakeland was going to be an upset potential no matter who they faced. Um, Hastings is extremely well coached. Bob Del Bovi uh, is one of the longest tenured coaches in the section, uh, been around the longest. Um, he does a phenomenal job at, at watching teams and coming up with game plans. Um, and also, there's something about that Hastings gym that keeps games low scoring um, that, you know, it, it's a tough gym to shoot in for whatever reason. It's been that way forever. Uh, so this is sort of like not the gym that Lakeland wants to go to, but if any team's going to overcome that, it, it's going to be the Hornets. And I, I do think that they have a good chance to go in there and upset them. Yeah, I mean, I saw Lakeland play football this year, and their quarterback, Brady Leonard, you know, they weren't a great team by any means. They, they, you know, they were very competitive in, in the top class. But Brady Leonard was, you know, kind of quintessential gunslinger. Yep. Um, I think bringing that mentality with basketball court, I think we've talked about a lot of these football players who come on, you know, it's basketball season. And like you said, I mean, like those players are dangerous. Yeah, I saw Hastings play at Blind you know, maybe three weeks ago or so. And they're a very strong team. They're not a great shooting team. Yeah, no. In the playoff, they can kill you. Yeah, yeah, they they they're gonna need their guards to play some of the best games of the year because Capuano can only do so much. And knowing what Lakeland does defensively, they're gonna collapse on him. They're gonna make it really hard for him to get open looks. He's gonna have to carry them uh, if they're gonna avoid this upset. When I look at the entire bracket, uh, we'll go through it right now. You know, I look at. Pearl River, obviously the number one seed. I don't think they're going to have a hard... I, I, I could see Nanuet. It could be a four or five point game at halftime. Um, you know, I, I I don't know if Nanuet could do it for four quarters. Uh, but this this is a group that's that, that's a great defensive team. A lot of familiarity. Dave Masterson is going to have them prepared uh, for this Pearl River team. But I, I, Pearl River's got something special going here. I, I think they move on to the quarters. Tappan Z, Roosevelt also in the first round. TZ wins. Defending state champions move on. Barm Hills will take on, uh, I think the Putt Valley is going to beat Edgemont. Barm Hills is not going to have a, have a difficult time with Putt Valley. They move on. Ardsley, I also see moving on to the quarterfinals. And then on to the county center. We'll start with this Ardsley Byram Hills game. Uh, Byram Hills is just not the right matchup for Ardsley. I think Zach Afobi, what he's done inside and just a dynamic post player. Uh, Tyson Ripa, you know, when you when you look at this Ardsley makeup of this team, again, this is just not the right fit for them defensively. Uh, as long as Byron Hills goes out there and 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 doesn't shoot poorly, uh, Phoebe doesn't get into foul trouble, I think that they hold off Ardsley at home to go to the county center. Bottom of the bracket, give me Lakeland. I think Lakeland going on the road to Hastings, it seems like just... It just seems like the right matchup for them. Um, I, I could see them not even having a great shooting game and beating Hastings. They don't need to put up 21 threes. I can see them just going in there and just handling business. Uh, Hanhud over Pleasantville. Nyack will win. Nyack will beat Obama, but Obama's going to give them, I think, give them a little bit of a scare. Albertus will be Panis, and then Rye will knock off Albertus. And then going to this county center, it's going to be. Rye uh, will beat Nyack in a very, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who think that Nyack on the right day could be the best team in Class A. So I think that they will move on. Uh, Rye moves on. I think just with Jake Kessner back, the team's back in the fold. They're all kind of healthy. They're all kind of back in the mix. I, I think Rye wins. And then Lakeland and Hen Hud. They split in the regular season. I think Hen Hud's got it. I think Hen Hud goes out there. They The third time around, they figure out a way to just, hold them on the perimeter and kind of ruin this little uh, dream story that they have moving on. Hen Hug goes to the Final Four in Rye uh, as well. I didn't mention who I thought was going to win TZ Pro River. That was intentional because I'm holding off. This is the only game, and and Ryan, you'll, you'll totally understand what I mean by this. So you can't be Tap and Z and be the defending state champions and try and be an underdog when you have... The nucleus of talent they have back, which is now healthy, and we'll talk about these guys, uh, Tommy Linehan and and um, Jack McCone in a moment, and say and play up the underdog role. That's like that's like TZ's thing, right? Be the underdog because eventually there's there's got to be a point where you can't be the defending state champions underdog, unless 
you're going to play the number one seed in their gym, and it's your rival, and it's Pearl River, and everything's on the line. So they can now say, hey, listen, we, we're the underdog. We, we, they all are going to buy into this concept, and they're going to go to Pearl River. Pearl River's going to beat them. I decided this today. I, 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 I thought, you know, on the right day, um, you know, the right matchup, TZ, Pearl River in a championship. Give me Pro River in their home gym. And again, TZ's tough, um, extremely talented. They have their guys back. I watched the first matchup. Pro River just never got going. I watched the second matchup. Pro River just never got going offensively. I think they make adjustments. Uh, when you look at this team, they're they're just way too talented uh, to kind of have another, basically another stinker like they had at TZ that day. Um, so I think Pro River in in, in a game that's going to need to sell tickets. It's basically like a tiny, it's like almost like a glorified CYO gym. Pro River wins. They go to the county center. They unseat the defending state champions. And I think the ride is all there. So they, them and Byron Hills in the semis, uh, I will take Pro River and, the, and go on to the championship. And then on the other side, you're going to have Rye will beat Hastings. Uh, Rye will beat Hen Hud to go to the final. And I think Pro River knocks off Rye and Pro River Pirates, Jerry Houston, they win the section championship. What do you think? What's the over? What's the over under in the Pro River Captaincy game? Like I don't know. 52? No, I, I, again, if, well, that's the thing, you know, Pro River is just a different team at home. They shoot the ball extremely well at home. Um, you know, I, I just, I think that this is, this is their time. You know, I felt last year it was TZ's time. Um, and I felt it, you know, basically middle through the playoffs. I said, I don't know how this team is going to lose. I just the way that they play, um, you know, all the pieces being back this year for them, you know, that they, that they're supposed to start the season with. Um, but to me, it's not. It's not a good fit to go there, to go to Pro River and what's going to be a wild environment. And it's not the biggest game of the year uh, for Pro River. It might be the biggest game of this century for Pro River. They have to be TZ in this matchup, and if they do, they win the section championship. Yeah. yeah. X factors. Want to talk X factors, guys? Who I think could. Let's go through the X factors. Yeah. You know, I, I know. I have. A, I have a couple that I wanted to give. Yeah. Out. Let's, uh, you know, let's go through your, who are your guys who are going to be, you know, those those names that we might not know yet. Yeah. Right? But, you know, by Austin County Center time, you usually find a way of making names for those guys. There, there is like a sentiment that again, I went back to it, just said it before about Nyack that on the right day, Nyack has had some of the worst, the toughest losses of the season, and a lot of weird circumstances. But they played back to back days in Westchester uh, late in the season, just because of schedule changes, um, and lost tough games, lose to Peak Skill the way they did. So to me, Ray Booten, uh, thousand point scorer, he's kind of a he's he's someone who's. You know, able to take a game, put a game on his shoulders. Um, so to me, Ray Booten is that guy. Gino Womack uh, from Hen Hud. And listen, I I I watched Hen Hud a few times. I watched them lose twice. I, I still think they're really good. I, I still think that they on the, on the right day. Uh, Jeremy Heady um, and, and Gino Womack. I I feel you know it would not shock me if they made it to that championship. They beat Rye in that semifinal to go to the final. Um, Jay Kessner again. We saw Rye lose some. Lose to John Jay Cross River uh, the final week. They're the 21 seed, um, but that was without Jay Kessner. They're back. They're healthy. Kessner practiced, I think, today for the first time in about eight days at, at full strength. Um, so he got beat up by by the flu. Um, when he's right and this team is able to just keep buying into what they do, you know, they're, they're an interesting team in that Kessner averages – probably about 15 points a game. And then they got about seven guys that average between five and eight points a game. Um, so they're, there's their balance. They're so hard to prepare for and they're so tough. Um, so that's, uh, that's who I think is, uh, you know, our X factor guys. And then of course, you know, Tommy Linehan, you know, I, again, I picked tap and Z technically to lose in the quarterfinal um, because he, I just don't know if he's played enough basketball to, to kind of elevate the way he did last year. If he proves me wrong, if he's, if he's 75% of what he was last year, they win the section championship. So uh, to me, I just don't know if he's quite there yet from a from a basketball leg standpoint. Him and Jack McCoy coming off the injuries. So those two guys are the, are the X factors for them. And uh, you know, last guy for me, and I know you like Zach Afobi from Byram Hills. Um, he is the ultimate X factor because he can bend the rim. I mean, he's he's probably um, the the best post player in this entire bracket. There are not many guys in section one like him. No, no. I mean, he is. He is getting better 
I mean, that's that's the other thing. So, you know, Tyson Ripa, you know, the little bit of the 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 chemistry they've had, they've been there all year, but I think Afobi's doing it in so many more different ways now. Um, he's he's scoring differently. Again, he's another one. It, it's it's all going to come down to how a game is officiated um, because if they let them play a little bit, you know, so he's so strong and so big that little contact for him is putting players on the floor. Um and last year we saw a little bit too where he, you know, teams were lining up to draw charges on him. And if he's able to kind of avoid that foul trouble, Byron Hills can win the section championship. So again, I, I don't feel confident picking anybody. So I'm with the number one seed who has a good road. Um, you know, if they can get through that quarterfinal matchup or whatever. But um, Byron Hills is another team that I feel like is live to win a championship. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, every now and again, you know, in the tournament, like in the NCAA, when you're doing your bracket, like you got to pick like one kind of weird final four. Yeah, and that was that was the season. I don't know. I'm I'm a big homer. I grew up in Pleasantville, oh. and I just need to give those guys a shout out because they had a bunch of football players who played last season. Yep. Uh, you know these you know great athletes. You know kids who played for the state championship in football. Um, you know, and a few of them dropped out based on injury, and you know needed some rest and things like that. And you know that team coming in at eleven and nine in Class A. Mm-hmm. Probably you know one of the two or three smallest schools in Class A. Um, quarterback up the football team, tremendous leader on the basketball court. Uh, you know, huge post presence. I think they might be in the first round, and like you said, if you know Raglan makes that upset, you know maybe they make a little run to the final four. Yeah, a number is great. I mean, Eta number was has has his game is totally changed in the second half of the year where I think he felt like, hey, I, I am this big, strong, physical player. I'm going to put the ball on the on the, on the the floor and go to the hole. Um, and he has overwhelmed teams defensively. And, um, you know, so you're right. He's definitely another X-Factor guy. Who do you have winning? Who's your, who's your, who's your champion? I have Byron in Class A. I mean, Class A. Yeah. Class A. Wow, okay. And who do they have to beat in the I, championship? I, I, think, I, I think Rapa is, you know... He's such a good leader at guard. I think we talked about this earlier in one of the other shows, how a strong guard play can really carry you through the tournament. If you have that down low post present, um, you know, I don't know yeah. if they can shake things up. They, they went to the championship last year, lost to Valhalla in that final, bad taste in their mouth. So, again, I feel like a motivated team coming in uh, to this postseason. Ryan, thanks so much, man, for, uh, for joining us. That's our Class A show. Be sure to follow us. Game day one throughout the entire postseason. We'll be handing out uh, MVP trophies, game day one MVP for the first time ever. So a very exciting time in the postseason. Ryan, have a good night. Take care, Kevin. All right.